In this presentation, I will be talking about the importance of our posture. During this presentation, I will define and help you to understand what posture is and the different types of posture. I will explain the importance of having good posture. I will explain how a stroke may have affected your posture. I will show what both good standing and sitting posture looks like. I will go into other influences of what can lead into poor posture. And then I'm going to be describing some different strategies that help correct posture and things to avoid when dealing with posture. So what is posture? The definition of posture is a position of your body parts in relationship to each other at any given time. Your posture can change with your position and during movement. For example, your posture is going to change from when you are laying down to when you are up and riding a bike. Posture can be both static or dynamic. Static posture is anytime you are not moving and are in a stationary position, such as standing still, sitting, or laying down. Dynamic posture is when you are moving, such as when you are walking, running, or bending over. Posture has been found to be both a predictor and an essential component for our balance, walking ability, and activity of daily living outcomes. Why does posture matter? Poor posture leads to compression on different body structures, such as our nerves and tendons. Standing or sitting for a long period of time with poor posture can put additive stress on our muscles, ligaments, and joints. I want you to think about a time when you fell asleep in a chair and your head was unsupported, possibly leaning forward and your chin was to your chest. When you wake up, did your head and neck feel sore? If it did, it's probably because the muscles and joints in your neck were under strain for that long period of time and they are now complaining. Poor posture can change the way your body moves. If your body moves in a way that is not normal, it can lead to tendonitis, pain, and damage of the surrounding body structures. Poor posture can lead to muscular imbalance. Having a stroke may lead to you already having some form of muscular imbalance, causing one side of your body to be stronger. However, muscular imbalance can also be due to having stronger muscles compared to the opposing, such as only strengthening your core muscles and neglecting to strengthen the counterpart of your trunk muscles. Poor posture can restrict blood flow and can interfere with your performance of certain occupations. Poor posture can also affect your balance. Having poor balance can increase your risk of falling. Balance may also reduce your range of motion. So if you are in a seated position right now, I want you to slump forward in your chair, bringing your shoulder and your back forward once you're in that position, I want you to try to lift your arm above your head. Once you do that, I now want you to sit straight up in your chair, maintaining good posture. Now I want you to try to lift your arm above your head. Which one was easier? You should have found it easier to lift your arm above your head when you were in a more upright position. That is because your body is in a more supported position by the postural muscles and your shoulder blade is now in a better position to allow a better range of motion in that motion. Good posture allows us to move in a way that we want, causing our bodies the least amount of strain and damage. So how can having a stroke affect your posture? It is common after having a stroke to have an impairment of either static, which is non-moving, or dynamic, which is moving posture. 
You may have some form of weight-bearing asymmetry. You may notice this when you go to either sit down or stand up and all your weight is shifted to either one bottom cheek or to one foot. If your stroke affected your vision, you may have noticed that your posture is hard to maintain if you cannot see to a certain side of your body, thus not being aware that half of your body could be in a slouched position. Having a stroke can impair your control of your postural stabilization involving both limbs. For example, both your legs or both your arms. A stroke can cause motor weakness, which is either partial or total loss of function of a body part, such as your leg. Motor weakness can result in muscle weakness, decreased or poor stamina, and lack of muscle control. Those can all affect the way you move and how you maintain posture. You may, after having a stroke, experience asymmetrical muscular tone. You may have an affected and a non-affected side. Your affected side may be either very tight or flaccid, causing you to either shift to one side of your body or not be as in tone with one side of your body. Lastly, deficits with conscious position and movement, touch and pain, can also occur after having a stroke and can lead to poor posture. If you are not aware of how your body moves in relationship to the rest of your body or do not have much sensation in, let's say, your leg, it'll be hard for you to maintain and weight shift to uphold good posture. Now I'm going to talk about what good standing posture looks like. In the picture, the first photo is a correct ideal posture that you want to try to maintain. Standing posture, to have good standing posture, starting with the head, your head should be in midline, sitting evenly between both shoulders, facing forward. We do not want to look to either side or up or down. Your shoulders should be relaxed, not hiked up, and they should be back and down. Doing that movement should cause you to feel like you are pinching your shoulder blades together. We want our bottom to be tucked in, meaning we do not want it to be pushed so far forward, and we do not want it to be pushed out as if you were going into a squat position. We want the slightest bend in our knees just so we are not locking our knees. Our feet should be flat on the floor, shoulder width apart, and the weight should be equal between both feet. After having a stroke, that might be the most difficult part is trying to put weight into your affected side. However, Maintaining this equal weight among both feet will help you to be in a more upright, even posture. The good way to think about standing posture is to pretend there's an imaginary straight line from the top of your head to the floor. That means your ears, shoulders, hips, knees, and ankles should all stack up along this line. Common postural par problems include a rounded back, rounded shoulders, and a protracted head, which is usually when you are looking at something in front of you. A new type of posture which has emerged within the last couple of years is called texting posture, and that is when you have a forward head due to looking down at your phone. This type of po posture can cause up to 60 pounds of extra pressure on your spine. Next, I'm going to talk about seated posture. Seated posture is very similar to standing posture. We want to keep your chin tucked in, so we don't want to be looking down or up and keeping our head in midline in line with the shoulders. Your shoulders should be relaxed down and back so bringing our shoulder blades back in together. 
Your weight should be equal between both of your cheeks of your bottom, meaning you should not be leaned to one side, causing more of your weight to shift into one of your bottom cheeks. Your bottom should also be back in the seat and not slouch forward. Your hips, knees, and ankles should follow the 90 rule, meaning your hips, knees, and ankles should all maintain to the best of their ability, a 90 degree angle. Slouching forward or bringing our feet behind us can cause the 90 degree angle to either become bigger or smaller, causing more of a strain on certain body parts. We also want our feet flat on the floor. If you are in an adjustable chair and your feet are not touching the floor, you should move the chair down to where you are able to maintain flat feet on the floor. Crossing your legs while seated will put strain on your back. If you are a human of habit and crossing your legs is something that you cannot live without, instead try crossing at the ankles to put less pressure on your back. Initially, when you try to sit or stand, with better posture, it will feel weird and it'll feel weak and you will get tired quickly. That's probably because your body is not used to it and your postural muscles have become weakened. That is normal, but with practicing of maintaining good posture, it will become easier and your postural muscles will start to strengthen making it not as uncomfortable in getting into that correct position. Besides having a stroke, there are different influences which can cause your posture to be either good or bad. The type of furniture you sit in can play a role in how your posture is. If you are seated in a chair that does not support your back, or your feet do not touch the floor, that can cause you to have poor posture. Stress is another one where if you are in stress and you carry it, let's say in your shoulders, your shoulders may tend to hike up and become rounded. So trying to decrease our stress can help to get those shoulders back down and relax. Also, your occupation may influence your posture. If you are sitting at a desk all day staring at a screen and your positioning is not ergonomically correct, that can cause a lot of strain. Also, if you have a job where you are bending over or picking things up all day, not maintaining good posture when squatting down or bending over can also have an influence on your posture. Some different strategies to help improve your posture. The first one is a movement called cat-cow. You can do this either seated or standing. That is when you bring your shoulders and your back forward, just like if you are slouched in a chair, and then you take your shoulders and your back and you bring them back by squeezing your shoulder blades together to help open up those postural muscles in your shoulders and upper body region. The shoulder blade squeeze looks like the bottom picture. This is when you want to try to imagine you have a pencil or some type of object between your shoulder blades and you have to imagine that you don't want that object to fall. So you must squeeze your shoulder blades together to keep that item in between your shoulder blades. This will help strengthen those shoulder blade muscles and help you to remember to get those shoulder blades back. The foam roller stretch is pictured in the top photo. This is when you can either take a foam roller or a rolled up yoga mat, anything soft that can be rolled up and you place it on the ground and lay on top of it. You want the foam roller or the rolled up yoga mat and between the shoulder blades. And this movement will just laying there will help 
to open up those shoulder muscles and help get you in the positioning that you want to be in when either standing or seated. Mountain pose is a good pose in which you stand up in a nice postural position and just maintain that position. Involving the mountain pose in your daily routines, such as when you're standing at the sink in your morning routine or when you're doing dishes, can help get you in better posture. Lastly, doing core exercises where you both strengthen your core and your trunk muscles and strengthening and stretching exercise of your postural muscles can help to improve your posture. Some things to avoid when dealing with our posture. Crossing your legs when seated. When you cross your legs when you're seated, that can cause a lot of extra strain on your back, which can eventually lead you to, to poor posture to try to get rid of the lower back pain. You want to avoid sitting or standing in one position for a long period of time. So if you are at home watching a marathon of your TV show, try during every commercial break to change position or to stand up. We want to avoid slouching in your chair as much as possible. Finding a chair that best, best suits your back can help to help you to avoid slouching in your chair. We want to avoid carrying all items on one shoulder. For women, if you usually carry your purse on one shoulder, try switching up what shoulder you carry it on every so often. If you are bringing in groceries from outside, do not put all groceries in one hand if you can avoid that. Try to even the weight between both arms and have bags in both of your hands. We want to avoid placing all your weight to one side of your body. So this one is a little more hard, especially if you have an affected side or don't have much sensation or awareness of one side of the body. But practicing weight shifting from side to side so that we are not placing all of our weight to one side of our body can help us to not be in a leaning or sway position and help maintain a nice upright position. We want to try to avoid shoes with heels. If you cannot avoid wearing high heels to work, then trying to minimize how long we wear them throughout the day can help substantially. Lastly, we want to try to avoid gazing downward for too long. If your phone is in your lap, try bringing your phone up to eye level. There are lots of things you can do to either avoid having bad posture or getting you to have bad posture. Here are my references. I hope that this video has either helped you to know what posture is or gave you a reminder of why having good posture is important. If the only thing you do is just to be aware of your posture, that is a start because awareness is key.